I think I did that too short. <laughs> I should probably have measured that twice. <sighs> Welcome to part three of the cheap bike build off. I've been quite excited about this one because uh, this is where we start working on the drivetrain. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the bike, mainly because as soon as that's on there, you can ride it. Uh, you may not have brakes at this point, but you can ride it. Um, I've been quite ill the last week or so, uh, so uh, I, I didn't get a lot done. I've tried to cram as much as I could into, into making this video yesterday, if you're watching this, uh, and um, we didn't get too far. We're mainly going to be working on the drivetrain today and start looking at cabling uh, and kind of rounding off the part list. Um, so at, by the end of this video, I will have near enough a final cost of what we've spent on the bike even though the bike's not quite finished but we'll talk about that a bit more at the end of the video so stick around but before we move on with this video there's one thing i wanted to mention uh, and it's this comment here i think this gentleman's missed the point of this whole build one i would love to be in a position where i was building these crusty old bikes that somebody wanted to pay me a thousand pound for it like i don't think that's a thing just so we're clear but the whole point of this video um is the fact that it is about seeing what you can achieve with such a small budget um so it is something i'm trying to do as as cheap as possible um i am likely to sell this bike just because it doesn't fit me very well um but i'm probably going to put it up as cost or maybe a little bit on top just to kind of cover the the time that i've put into it but like it's it's not going to go for very much money and that's correct and fair so yeah it, it ticked me off a little bit. If you follow me on Instagram, I had a bit of a rant and put it on there and stuff. So, you know. I had quite a lot of comments last week on the last video, actually, talking about budgets and kind of how much things are worth and how much I should be saying they're worth and things like that. Um, but there's one thing in particular that I wanted to mention. Someone said the fact that, and this is a very fair comment, um, about the fact that surely it's only a challenge if you're buying this stuff today. If you, stuff that you've accumulated over time, then is it even fair? And I totally agree, Agree. Uh, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, I think there's still gonna be an element of the fact that if you are into building retro bikes and this sort of thing, you probably do have some parts knocking around, even if it's a little bit. But more importantly, we are kind of making a challenge, you know, we have to build it over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we had like a month in total. Um, and you know, the frame you had to have got recently, it's not just something you've had knocking about for years and years and years, and it's like actually worth hundreds of pounds and blah, 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 blah. But the point I'm getting at is the fact that there are some parts that you would take some time looking for. And I think that's the message I want to leave you with with this video is the fact that you're not gonna find all these parts today. You might find the perfect frame to start you with. It's a great place to start. And then you build up from then. It may actually take you about two, three months just to get all the parts together before you even start looking at building anything. So I think it is fair to be picking out parts and using bits that I might have had for a little while. Um, I tend to try and pick up my parts as cheaply as possible so that I can build all these bikes that I built for you guys. So um, yeah. Let me know what you think about that sort of stuff in the comments because there's been lots of talk in the comments. You guys have been having chats back and forth as well, which I've been really enjoying reading. Um, so yeah, let, let's keep that going. Like, what should, am I failing this? Am I doing this fairly still? We'll, we'll see. Well, anyway, there's enough of that. Let's see what we're going to focus on today. <laughs> we're going to focus on drivetrain and maybe brakes if we get that far. So, first things first is the hanger. Um, yep, yeah, it's straight. Uh, the drivetrain or the, the radio I'm going to use is this one here. It's the X3. Um, I think I want to say this one cost me like eight pounds. Stick around to the end and I will talk about all the pricing and a breakdown. I should probably say at this point, um, the audio on this video is not quite up to my standards as usual. The mic on my coat wasn't working correctly, uh, so uh, it's the onboard camera cam camera mic that you can hear the majority of the time, so uh, yeah, apologies for that. It does get better near the end. Well, that was lucky. I was 
hadn't actually tested threads on this uh, hanger yet. It was, could have been one of those moments where you start and you're like, oh, great, they're threaded. Oh, that felt nice. That was all right then. Now, this is a um, eight speed derailleur that um, also is sold as a seven speed. You basically just need to adjust the limiting screws and you're away. But uh, I've used this on a bunch of bikes. It's solid, it's cheap, uh, and you're going to get some pretty efficient, happy shifting, which is what we're all about. When it comes to the limit screws, um, I like to do that first without the chain. Uh, this looks like it's going to be pretty bang on for some reason. Not quite. Um, it's always best to do it again, um, but I like that first time just to kind of eye everything up. Whilst it's off, or whilst the chain's off. Just give it a little screw fitting. Probably a better screwdriver than this, this is not quite the right size. That looks alright. I must say, I uh, much prefer it when children aren't playing in the gardens, being loud and annoying me. Uh, but hey, that's life. Uh, kids should be playing outside, it's not my point, just uh, this is my workshop. Right then, moving on to chain. Um, this is a SRAM 8-speed chain. 8-speed will work on a 7-speed. It's, it's more a 7-speed won't work on an 8-speed. I think I've got that the right, right way round. I hope I've got that the right, right way round. Otherwise, this will be a problem. I'm pretty sure this is correct. I've talked about this several times, um, about chains, cleaning new chains. Uh, and most people have different opinions on them, but uh, I stick with clean the old crap that's on them, or the factory crap, and then put some nice lube on it. The factory stuff that is oh, on these chains is super sticky, even if it's just on the hat on your hands, you can feel how sticky it is. Imagine how um, sticky it is when it comes to picking up dirt and crud off the road. Very, very sticky is the answer. It is a brand new chain, so it it's not a hard job. Just give it a good old wipe to get, at least on the outside of the chain, that crap off. Size, but when it comes to sizing a chain, there's no like science to it. You just basically just do whatever looks right and then you're done. I'm joking, I'm joking. There is a science to it. Um, I think there's more than one method. The method that I use is the one that uh, Calvin uh, from Part Tool did in the video, which is basically get it onto the biggest rings on both parts of the drivetrain, find where it meets and then go down two links until you get to one that you can cut and that will meet. And then what I do at this stage is do it one more time. Nice and tight. And one, as in one, two, and then that will, I can cut that. There. Basically, now can I reach my chain tool without letting go of the measurement? God damn it. I just knock and then. No, oh, f I'm a professional, I know what I'm doing. Chain tools are one of those things that you could buy really, really cheap, and they're fine. But when you get a really nice one, like this Lifeline one, oh my, does it make a difference? I don't know if I can explain it fully, but it's just like the feel and the fact that it just works. Like some of the cheaper ones just look, feel like it's just like mashing the chain. That's going to be a problem. Oh, there they go. Oh, so that just easy. These are uh, SRAM chains I use on pretty much all my builds. One, I do a lot of eight speeds and they do a cheap eight speed. Uh, and then number two is the fact that um, they've got quick links in them and they're just solid. And they're, that's not, they're not the best reasons in the world. That's really low. But uh, now I'm just threading. I should probably do a little bit of a closer view. People ask me all the time to do an in-depth uh, drivetrain video. This is probably as close as you're ever going to get to it. Um, but yeah, thread the chain in. And then 
Fred. Yeah, and then Fred. And then, and then, and then Fred's the train, chain, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then Fred's the chain through, simply like that. Now, if I zoom out, I can get my quick links them on the ends of each part of the chain and then shoot them across the garden. No. Oh, don't. Oh, let me show you that. There we go. Then, be very carefully now, put that over the top and then get that link in. One good strike on the pedal. At the beginning of the last video, I said, um, that the shift in or the the line chain line was not great um let's find out how not great it is if you push this bit here can you see make sure i can see yeah so if you push this bit here you can see it does the same thing what the cable would do so i can now move through without having to do anything else and see how that shifts it does not get on the top oh it does get on the top i'm sorry you know what? That doesn't feel too bad. Let's put some power into it. Well, they're going to jump off. I'll very slowly move it back through. Bingo. 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 So one thing I did want to do was the actual stem itself. That's the wrong size. Uh, the stem itself, I put quite high, thinking it'd need it. Um, but then when I was sat on it, testing out how it felt, it was super high. Um, so it, I think it can be slammed. Um, so, which will make it look a little cleaner. I'll leave some slack in the cables anyway, just in case someone did want to uh, make it higher or something. Saying that though, because it, it, we're doing cantilever from here, um, it's the cable here that you need to change, the actual um, cables. That's just two words, just two, it's cables. The, 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 the break, the cupboard, why, why, why is English so hard sometimes? cable that's what i'm trying to get to the outer cable will come from here and that doesn't need to change shape that could just be the same length the inner cable that comes will be exposed here that could just be adjusted and then the same go up and down for depending on who's riding it got there in the end didn't i not only do I struggle with words, I also struggle with numbers. Um, I struggle with a lot of things, but and the point I'm getting at is the fact that uh, when I do my sticker orders and kind of get everything kind of set out in place, put them on the website, more often than not, um, I don't count them correctly uh, and I don't put the right amount of stickers on the website. And then we get to the end of it, everybody's like, oh, you sold out that sticker. And I was like, no, I haven't. I still got like five or six left. And that happens quite a lot to the point I end up then stuck with a bunch of stickers that uh, have been sold out for a while and um, they're now one-offs or in this case a handful of these so I've just put on the website uh, as of this video uh, a sticker pack that is available for you to purchase and um, I usually put these on my Instagram and like they go in a few minutes and stuff and um, you guys don't often see it if you're just a youtuber subscriber um, so this one's for you guys I imagine by the time you're watching this it might already be sold out there's only a few of them um, but yeah little sticker packs if you do miss out on it though don't worry there are some other stickers on the website the website's the one that's been at the bottom of the screen and um, yeah I've got a bunch of new designs coming. You've been asking for Save Our Bikes stickers to come back. They are coming back. I'm just waiting on the delivery. So uh, yeah, should be soon. Generally, the seven speed SRAM stuff uh, is on lower end bikes that would have a front derailleur as well. Um, so this is a seven, uh, seven speed shifter, but I had to purchase the seven and the one. Sorry, 
seven and the three. So the front, the, the front of the radio shifter's in there as well. English is difficult today. I don't know what's going on. But yeah. Nice little shifter. I've used the eight speed ones of these all the time. I imagine this is going to be exactly the same, but just seven. So we're banging on. Then, I don't know if I'm going to do this in this video, Let's see how much time we get. But, um, these are the brakes I'm going to use. They are big, like cruiser style, full hand brakes, but they are so nice and they were dirt cheap. So they will make all that, although because of that, oh no. Okay, that could be a problem. I don't know if you can see on the camera. Essentially, because this brake has this big bit on the bottom here, it gets in the way of everything. Oh, that's not there. I wonder if I run them opposites. Ugly. It could be way worse, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that. Okay, so after some serious tomfoolery and faffing with the uh, the budget, I've changed some things. Firstly, we're not going to do that. Secondly, I found these, which are Vans uh, Colts, which are super nice grips, which are the really long ones I've just discovered. Hmm. Maybe that, hmm. We'll work that out in a second. The other thing is these. These are much, much nicer uh, brake levers. And then um, we'll go on and leave space for the shifter. Plus, oh, these are quite old, so I think I can justify having these on here without taking too much of the budget. Without also trying not to scratch that to death. These are the BMX. Well, they are BMX ones anyway, but they're very long. I might cut them. If I actually cut them to like this bit here, just get rid of that bit, I think they'd fit quite nicely. Yeah. All about saving the budget here, so let's give it a go. Uh, Sean, if you're watching, sorry for cutting your grips, but uh, finest keepers. I say finest keepers, you gave them to me. I think I did that too short. <laughs> I should probably have measured that twice. It's hard to tell right now, but I think it'll be fine. I, mean, I should have measured them against that. Yeah, my original gut feeling was to just to cut that little bit off the end. Oh, God, I screwed myself over so many times. Right, hear me out. I'm running Billy Bonkers, tan walls with the black, right? I've just found another Vans grip in the tan. Can I get away with running one tan grip and one black grip? Because it matches my tires. And instead of this being a really silly mistake of mine, it's a fashion statement and it was all on purpose. Let me know in the comments below if I'm getting away with this or if I should just continue hanging my head in shame. I'll let you decide. Where's my, there it is. <laughs> right, so now it's getting late. It's getting, losing light, which is the main problem here. So I just want to try and get uh, cabling done. Now that I've had time to think about these grips, I think I want to run them full length anyway, after all that. So, what a waste of grips. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Let's get some cable in. So I really like putting pink cables on my bikes. So I have a lot of pink cables knocking around. Um, so I'm going to use pink cables, but I hear what you're saying. Mm, 
does it really go? And you're right, it doesn't really go. So, I've got an idea, but I'm not going to tell you right this second. We'll have a look at it in a little while. The secret to um, good cables is mainly having it as tight as possible without it being stretched. So you want big loops. People always say, oh, just big loops. Big loops are great, but if the longer the cable, the further it's got to travel. So I think somewhere in the middle, having something like this where it's quite tight, but uh, it's also a big loop. Uh, oh gosh. Couldn't just unravel neatly, could it? Yeah. I like that very much. I mean, the pink on the blue isn't bad, but check this out. This is a paracord. Um, I saw this potentially on Gary's project's Instagram stories, but it wasn't him that came out of it. Someone else had done it on their bike, and I absolutely adored the idea. But essentially, you pull the inner out, and in theory, never tried this before. We are trying this first time together. Uh, it should just come out. Okay, so that's that. And then, sorry, the theory, the bit that I'll actually get into, is that you can use it to cover a cable. Oh my God, I think this is gonna work. The question is how hard, hang on, you can't see, can you, how hard it's gonna to be to uh, thread it through. God, if I can make this work, this will look so good. Okay, this is not as easy as it looks. I suppose I didn't think about the gauge you'd, of paracord you'd need. I wonder if there's different versions of it, you know? Now if I can use... How much you can actually see what I'm doing here, sort of. Ow! No, that's not working. It's not helping the slightest. Well, as you can see from that tiny little bit there, it would look really cool, but um, I don't know if I can get it in there. That first bit is super easy to get on, but after that, it just becomes quite difficult. The further it goes on, the tighter it gets and the harder it is to do it. The thing is, these these interwoven like threads, you pull on them, they get tighter, kind of like a shoelace, right? So that is, I don't know if I can, oh, I can get it off. Okay, back to the drawing board. Um, that didn't work. I can't get it on there to save my life. Uh, so I'm going to use brake cable on all the pits, which I have lots of. I have some black great ca brake cable, no problem, but uh, didn't have any black gear cable. For anybody wondering, the difference between the brake and the gear is quite literally just the fact that the gear cable is a lot thinner or fine, um, where the brake cable is a bit thicker, so the outer housing doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be quite as thick. So, and that's the only reason, as far as I know. Yes, mate. I don't know if uh, these mics are working in the slightest anymore, so I don't even know if there's any point talking to the camera. I feel like I should do it anyway, just in case. <laughs> if I can get this shift in before the day is out, I'll be happy, because I'm done. I clearly have aren't well enough to uh, be making decisions in it yet. I might have another go at doing that uh, cabling later. Um, so I really want it to work. And I wonder if it's me, if I'm the problem, you know? Yeah? You've got another prawn cracker. 
Well done. My son is currently stealing prawn crackers and he thinks it's because uh, he thinks they're mine and that I should be bothered about it. But uh, I'm vegetarian. I don't actually eat prawn crackers. Whoa, I almost fell over then. So uh, he's more than welcome to them. Joke's on him, isn't it? Right, now, in theory, because of the indexing has been done already, that should shift out of the box. Um, and I'm also going to put the bike up in the air because uh, I'm done with bending over. Hmm. Oh. Well, I'm not sure at what point that happens, but the cable's gone completely slack. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I like the prawn cracker update. I think it needs a little tweak on the index then. I don't think that makes sense. I'm sure some of you are screaming at the camera right now, telling me what it is, but I uh, can't hear you. Okay, right. I need to tie me up. and pack up for the day. Daddy, yeah. did you buy that bike? No, I built it. Built it? Yeah. Was that, what's it here for? I built it. What do you think, is it good? Yeah. I can say that's really cool. Oh what, the bike stand's really cool? Yeah. All right, but how, if you had to rate the bike out of 10, one, one being bad, 10 being amazing, which, what number would it be? 10. High five. And that brings us to the end of part three of the cheap bike build-off. Cheap bike build-off. I got it right the first time. <laughs> so I'm not gonna keep you for much longer, but if you are someone who is interested in how much things are costing and how much I'm putting down for them, um, this is the moment for you. So I've been keeping a very nice uh, tally of what I've been putting on. Um, so uh, just to kind of catch you up from the last video. Um, uh, so the frame itself, uh, I put down as uh, £30. I went through and actually it only cost me £30. I think I said it was 35 at the beginning. It wasn't, it was 30 I've also got then MISC items, which was uh, the little... Uh, spaces and bolt changes that I did on the headset just to kind of change the way it looked um, uh, they're probably not worth that much maybe it's less than that it was just literally a couple of uh, rings but whatever uh, inner tubes four pounds the Billy Bonkers one of the things you guys talked a lot about is the Billy Bonkers I even got a lot of messages on Instagram about it um, most people say that I shouldn't have paid that much anyway I've actually gone through and looked at them now I didn't pay 30 pounds for tie it was 30 pounds for both of them so I've said that they're 20 pounds now because they've been on several bikes done hundreds of miles so I think that's a fair price uh, I'm not going to listen to any more comments about Billy Bonkers in the in the comments though so they're 20 pounds that's what we're going for uh, the cassette was four pounds the handlebars are still staying at five pounds the stem three pounds crank five pounds chain ring three pounds BB three pounds the radio uh, was brand new at 12 pounds on sale the shifter was 10 pounds but it was for the front and rear derailleur. Um, so I'm just gonna half the price, I think that's fair, so five pounds. Um, the brakes, um, I've not talked about them much. I haven't really talked about them at all, I don't think, in this video. No, we didn't. Um, they are uh, going to, I'm gonna say they're gonna be five pounds. They are old brakes, they're pretty smashed up. I'll confirm that in the next video. The brake levers, five pounds. The seat, the charge spoon, I was thinking it was worth still like 20 quid and stuff, because that's, kind of how much you pay for them which is obviously mental and a lot of people pointed out the fact that if you went online now you'd probably pick it up for 12 quid so 12 20 pounds is mental for a, a very old charged spoon so i agree uh, so a lot of people said five pounds we're going to five pounds which brings us to the grand total currently of 113 pounds which if you don't know from the previous videos the budget is 120 pounds so we're off of it by this much. 
which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm surprised I've done I've done this well. Not gonna lie. In the next part, I will finish the build and take it for its first little ride. Um, I will do a follow-up video after that as well. So there probably will be five parts in total. Um, but the next week's video, the next one will be the final build. I'll promise you I'll get it finished. There's only a little bit left to do. And we'll take it for a spin, check it out, see what it's like. Um, the follow-up video, I do want to kind of talk a bit more in depth about, because I've had so many comments about this cheap bike build-off uh, and kind of like things that people would do differently and a lot of people saying that uh, I should do it but differently and stuff but we'll talk about that in the future so if you're interested in learning more about cheap bikes and builds and different videos I do and most importantly seeing the next part of this series and um, please do subscribe to the channel and if you can't wait until next video uh, this one here is a particularly good one